We are going to cover the greatest four-cylinder engines of all time, in no particular order, starting with the oldest engine on our list and working our way to the present, and the holder of the highest specific output of any mass production engine, so be sure to stick around until the end. We begin, however, in 1980, with the most powerful engine Mitsubishi has ever made, of course, we are talking about, the mighty, 4G63T, an engine we have partially covered before in our video, a 2-litre turbo's doomed. This engine is widely known for its use in the Evo however it found its way into numerous cars over the years. The tuning potential is well known and is best epitomized by the FQ400. This tuned 4G63 put out 405 horsepower back in 2003, it was only one second slower around the top gear track than a V12 Lamborghini Murcielago and in an Evo magazine test, the FQ400 was able to lap the Bedford Autodrome faster than an Audi RS4 and a Porsche 911 Carrera 4S. The Porsche stat is most impressive given that the Evo was a four-door saloon with a good-sized boot, up against a true sports car, impressive stuff. Next, we have the original BMW M3 engine, this was not a V8, nor was it a turbo inline-six, it was in fact, a naturally aspirated, inline four-cylinder. The S14 was a high-revving, dual overhead cam engine, producing 192 horsepower in its original form. It had numerous versions, including those used in the Evo models and at its peak, made 235 horsepower thanks to an enlarged displacement to 2.4 liters in the S14 B25 Evo 3. Our next engine is quite simply iconic, for many reasons, but one you may be most familiar with is the introduction of VTEC. We have the B16B to thank for this, it is the granddaddy of all screaming Honda engines. We could spend all day listing the variations of this engine so we will pick one, which we think is the best, the B16B Type R, the heart of the EK9 Civic Type R and one of the highest power outputs per litre for a naturally aspirated engine with 182 horsepower at a screaming 8200 rpm. In 1997 this engine threw the Type R to 60 in 6.7 seconds, a quarter mile time of 15.3 seconds and topped out at 140 miles per hour, all of this performance 26 years ago, what an engine this was. Moving over to Nissan we have the SR engine. Ever heard anyone say red top, or black top? Well they are talking about the epic Nissan SR20. This engine has powered some of the greatest cars Nissan has ever made, including the Silvia family of cars such as the 180SX and the beautiful S15. Alongside the Pulsar GTIR, the SR20DET is a 2-liter, dual overhead cam, 4-cylinder turbo, that made factory power outputs of between 201 and 247 horsepower. However, if built properly, these engines are good for 700 wheel horsepower and are widely used in drift builds to this day. Crossing over into Europe, and as we move closer to the modern era we arrive at one of the VW offerings on our list, the legendary 1.820 valve turbo. This engine ticks the box, as many of these engines do, for its widespread use. From the factory you could get power outputs of between 150 to 240 horsepower from this 1.8 litre four-cylinder, however many are modified to run closer to 600 horsepower and can easily handle 400 to 500 horsepower due to their strong foundations and is most associated with the original Audi S3. As we enter the 21st century we are given one of the greatest naturally aspirated engines of all time, the Honda F20C, found in the front of the S2000. The F20C is so impressive because, for a decade straight, it remained the highest specific output per liter engine in the world, only being beaten by the Ferrari 458. Let that sink in, a Honda, mentioned in the same sentence as a Ferrari. This engine made 247 horsepower at its peak from just 2 liters, it has won International Engine of the Year 5 times, and hits peak power at a beautiful 8600 rpm. Just its noise alone is enough to find it on this list, let alone its output. Sticking with Honda we have the K20A, yet another masterpiece from the Japanese automaker. These engines produced between 212 and 221 horsepower and powered some of the best modern Hondas including the EP3 Type R, the DC5 Integra also known as the Acura RSX to name a few. These engines were rev limited to between 8400 and 8600 rpm. They have been swapped more times than a Pokemon card and can be easily boosted. The stock engine is good for 500 horsepower with uprated internals even achieving 1000 horsepower. 
Heading back to Germany again, we have spoken about this engine quite a lot on the channel, it sat in the front of our S3 right now, and boy, do we love it. We are of course talking about, the EA888. What makes the EA888 such a great engine is not only its versatility, like the 4G, it is used across a wide range of cars, but also its tuning scope, tuned S3s and Golf Rs are known to hit a little over 500 horsepower on stock blocks making them very potent engines that are widely available and have a huge range of aftermarket parts. This brings us to the present day, and a quick honorable mention to this engine's predecessor, something we have covered in the video in the top right, be sure to check that out after this video. When Mercedes announced the M139, jaws around the world, hit the floor. This engine, is the world's most powerful four-cylinder engine in serial production with a specific output of 208 horsepower per litre or 104 horsepower per cylinder. This 2-litre four-cylinder also puts out more power than the current Audi RS3 five-cylinder, which is mighty impressive. This engine flings the A45S to an official 0 to 60 of 3.9 seconds, but cars have hit much lower times than this, ushering in the era of sub-four-second hatchbacks that can embarrass supercars. This engine is still fairly new so who knows the tuning potential it has, for now, we will leave it here, and maybe in the future we can cover this engine in greater depth. We would like to thank you for watching this video, we publish regular content so be sure to subscribe to the channel and why you are here, why not check out some of our other videos. Until the next time, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again soon.